Do we have them? Yeah, we do. All right. On the phone with us right now, Ethan, is NFL Hall of Fame running back from the Dallas Cowboys, Tony Dorsett. All right. Wow. Tony, what's happening? Oh, man, not a whole lot, man. I'm just enjoying life, enjoying retirement here in Texas. A little warm, but I'm looking forward to coming up, up to the Northeast this uh, this weekend. It's, it's supposed to be a little cooler so I can cool off a little bit. That's right. We hear you're going to be at Bruce Bennett Nissan Route 7 in Wilton tomorrow. I most certainly am going to be at Bruce Bennett Nissan from about 1.30 to uh, 3.30, uh, signing cars and hoping to get some people there to see if they want to get them a new vehicle or something. Now, Tony, I asked you uh, some in the last interview we did some general questions about your career, but uh, I want to focus... Focus on. I saw a story on uh, the HBO series Costas. Now you appeared talking about uh, Earl Campbell. Describe to us a little bit uh, your relationship with Earl and and what the story was about. Uh, Earl and I have a, a very good relationship. Um, you know, something that was created um, through our professional football careers here in Dallas and he, him in Houston. And uh, you know, we just kind of like bonded to each other. It's one of those things that's kind of almost unexplainable. But you know, it's something about being a running back may have had something to do with it. But you know, we. Just became pretty good friends, and and obviously, you know, now that in retirement, um, we're both in, in similar businesses. Uh, one of the businesses, the businesses that I'm involved in, is the food business, and Earl's in the food business, and so we, our paths have crossed quite a few times over the years, and we've become very dear friends. And, and it's just, uh, you know, the Bob Costas piece was obviously about, um, I guess, uh, Earl and, and 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 the condition that he's in uh, after football. And obviously, you know, if, if you've seen that show, you know that uh, Earl's, um, you know, physically. Is, is, is not in the best of shape uh, at, at this moment, but uh, uh, you know he's working to get himself back back up to par. Uh, and uh, it's just an unfortunate thing that you know his style of running and uh, some of his genetics put him in in a, in a pretty uh, a bad situation, so to speak, for physically. Yeah, you called him the uh, what was it, the Joe Frazier? I called him the Joe Frazier of running backs, and I said that because you know Joe Frazier was a, was a punishing guy. He, he he took the punish and he dished it out, and that's exactly what Earl Earl did. You know he took punishment and he dished and he dished it out but you know when you're taking it I mean, even when you're dishing it out you're still you're still absorbing it that was one of the things that uh, probably worked because uh, he, 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 he dished it out more than he took it yeah he, he was born with what, what a genetic spine issue and and they were saying that I, it wasn't necessarily all football but football attributed to accelerating his degeneration you know physically but well, well, uh, football contributes to a whole lot of degeneration of a lot of a lot of athletes and obviously all of us that have played it especially you play it on a professional level for any any time span. Uh, the degenerative uh, situation is going to get sped up. No, there's no question about it. You know, football is a very demanding physical sport, and uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, you know the NFL retired players are having to go through at, at this current time fighting for help within the insurance disability situation. And it's, it's just a sad scenario, but it's just something that we have to go through, and hopefully we'll, we'll weather the storm. Who do most of the retired players? Who are they pointing the finger at? Is it Gene Upshaw and the players? Is Association or Roger Goodell? Well, I think at this point, most of the fifth finger is being pointed at, at Gene Offshaw and the union. And, and I, and I, you know, you made just a key key statement. I, I think, you know, it, it should be a combination of both. I mean, you know, these owners are making billions of dollars. They're getting very, very wealthy because of, uh, of obviously the output that the, these athletes are, are putting forth towards them as far as their businesses are concerned. So, you know, they should they should have some concern themselves about the, the welfare of, of their players. So, you know, I think both of them should be uh, involved in it, but obviously, you know, the union is, is our bargaining arm, and they should, uh, you know, Gene needs to hear a lot of it. If, if he's not going to, so he needs to do something. If he does something, then he won't, he won't hear a whole lot of it. Now, Phil, Phil Sims was talking about an interesting point, and the first thing that came to my mind is Jamarcus Russell just signed a $69 million contract. <laughs> the, the players from today really should be kicking a little bit more back to you guys and the guys from your era. That's how Phil feels, and, and I don't disagree with him at all. I mean, is, well, is that something you guys talk about? Well, I think that's something that, that needs to be discussed and, and, and understood. I think as a, as a young player <clears throat> coming into the league, obviously everybody, I was there, we all been there, you want to get as much as you can, but I think if you, if, if you put it down and you break it down to these guys and let them understand what possibilities could be after they retire, five, ten, and they need to understand that you're going to be an ex-player longer than you are, are a current player, and I think once you enlighten, you enlighten them to, to those things, they'll, they'll understand 
understand those things a lot better. But when you know when you're coming out as a rookie, everybody all they're thinking about is you getting as much as you can. But people need to sit down and it needs to be brought forth and let them understand that you know this is a very physical, very demanding game. Take your body takes a lot of abuse, and you got to understand that you know again you're going to be an ex player longer than you were a current player unless unless something just catastrophic actually actually happens. But this is near and dear to my heart. I mean, I I, I, I experience issues myself. I've had to have surgery on on my left arm because I lost use of my left arm because I lost use of my left arm back in 98, 99, whatever it was and, and you know, and, and didn't know if I was going to get those nerves back but fortunately for me it did after the surgery but they called it football trauma and now I'm experiencing a, a lot of similar work problems with my right arm and uh, my internist told me that um, eventually I'm going to have to have surgery on that but I, I'm, I'm not totally buying into it but you know it's because of football that you know I'm having these problems as well so I'm, I'm, I'm all for you know players uh, you know I, I think player retired players and I think that you know once you become vested and sometimes not, not even if you become vested because some guys you know have tragedies before that time but uh, but overall you know once you become vested you should have health insurance for the rest of your life this is a different business this is not like I, IBM this is like you put your, your health and your life on the line every time you step on the practice field and in a ball game so it's a different life and it's a different business so some people out there I know they don't quite understand they say well it's a business when you when you're still you're through but no when you're through with this business you still feel the effect of this business physically it's very demanding you got the opportunity recently and it, Earl was part of it too you got together to take a photo with all the uh, the Heisman Trophy winners uh, tell us a little bit about what kind of a day that was and how much fun <laughs> well, let me tell you not the day itself let me tell you the weekend the weekend was a great weekend for the Heisman winners to all get together you know from all different eras and to get down there the fellowship the, 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 the network and just and just have a good time not only with ourselves but with, 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 your, with your families and the, their families and all of that so it was it was quite a weekend, man, and it's and it was all and it's always good, man. You know, every time you, know, you get a bunch of athletes together, man, it's always it's always a good time. You know, it's, it's one big fraternity. You know, when you get a bunch of guys together, and it's and it's always good uh, to get, like I said, to get together and fellowship and just have a good thing and reminisce about old times. Tony, we really appreciate it. We know you're going to be there tomorrow, at Bruce Bennett Nissan between one thirty and three thirty in Wilton. Uh, on Route 7, and uh, I'm going to see you down there. I'm going to be doing the live broadcast well, from well, there. Tell me what, man. You, you do a good broadcast, man, today so we can get a lot of people, a lot of faces down there so we can have a lot of fun this weekend, eh? Yeah, we're going to pump this event up. And uh, I, I just got to say one thing. You know, being from uh, New York, it's surprising how many uh, as people in my family. I got three cousins, all named Anthony, big surprise, Italian guy, who are huge Dallas Cowboy fans and just wanted me to say hi on their behalf. Uh, you know, the Cowboy fans, we we, we, we kind of transcended all, all areas, and, and, and uh, the people that... Uh, uh, you know, you, you, we go up to the northeast. You go out to the west. You go to the deep south. Whatever, you know, for one for one of these reason or another, we have cowboy fans there. So that's a good feeling. Tony, it's a, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show again. Thank you so much, man. It's been my pleasure. Have a good day. Thanks, Tony.